27th edition today. Um, so that you all have an idea of what it is, how it's used at Stratford and the whole bit. Um, has anybody used APA before? Yes, this no. uh, class has been using it for this class, but basic, basic. Um, basic, basic, okay. And it's a 100 level class, so I don't think uh, a lot of people have been using it before us. Okay, not a problem, not a problem. Um, then we'll go through a bunch of different things. And um, I'm going to make my uh, PowerPoint full screen. So it's going to be hard for me to watch the chat room. So if you guys can um, unmute yourself and ask any questions anytime, if you're not understanding something, you want more information, that's what I'm here for. So please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and ask questions. So as Dr. Garaya said, I'm Laura DeLeon. I'm the university librarian. Um, I'm actually at the Alexandria campus this morning. I'm usually here on Mondays and Wednesdays. So mm, about 10 to three normally. So if you need to come in, feel free to do that. Uh, so, okay, let's go ahead and get started. And you might ask yourself, why do we use APA? Well, we're just gonna go sh through a short presentation on that so that you get an idea of why we use it here at Stratford University. So, um, the, the first two things that it does, okay, is it helps you organize your information. So when your instructor is reading your paper, they know where the different parts of the paper are, okay? It's easy for them to pick out. The other thing that it does by writing your paper in APA format is that it helps you avoid plagiarism because you're citing your sources, both within the body of the paper as well as in the reference page. And we'll, that's part of what we're all going to talk about today. But before we do that, we need to talk about general formatting of an APA style paper. Okay, there's certain things that you have to always do when you put your APA style paper together. And the first part is you wanna make sure that you double space the entire paper from start to finish, every single page, every piece of information needs to be double spaced. And then next, you want to make sure that you've got one inch margins. Now, the good news is normally your uh, word processing tends to default to one inch margins. But if you're not sure, always go under, you know, uh, page layout and your margins. Uh, normally, like I said, they're default to one inch. The other thing that you need to do is make sure that you're using Times New Roman font, 12 point text, and the text color is always black. Uh, you don't want something, you know, to highlight a title and have it at 24 uh, point text in hot pink. That's, that's not APA style. APA style is just general, Times New Roman, 12 point black text. Whoops, sorry about that. And then uh, the last one is you always want to make sure that there is a page number up in the header on the right hand side. And even the first page of your APA paper has a page number on it, even though you'll see in a minute that it's your title page. So those are the general formatting rules. Now, when we talk about what makes up an APA style paper, okay, there's a minimum of three pages. So the first page is always going to be what we call your title page. And notice it's the only thing on the title page is this information here, as well as the page number that we just talked about being in the upper right hand corner um, of the header. You type your title and you bold it. You've got your name, you've got Stratford University, you've got your course code and the name of your course, you've got your instructor's name, and then the due date. And notice how it's vertically and horizontally centered. Okay, so again, that's your title page and this is the only information that's on your title page. After that, 
comes the body of your paper. Now, this could be one page long. It could be five to seven pages long. It's whatever your instructor tells you to do, okay? And notice how each individual paragraph is indented a half inch. Notice how everything is double spaced and your headers, you know, your main section headers are um, centered as well as bolded. And then if you have headers under, you know, your main section headers, there's specific ways to do that also. But again, this could be one page long, it could be three to five pages long. You always want to check your rubric or ask your instructor or look at the instructions for your paper so you know how long the body of the paper has to be. And then finally, we have the reference page. Okay, this is generally what the reference page is going to look like. And notice, again, the reference page is on its own page. Um, you, don't, you don't end your paper and then turn around, hit your enter key and start your references. The references are on their own page. Um, your references are going to use what we call a hanging indent so that the first line of the citation is left justified. And uh, each line within the citation after the first line is indented a half inch. That just makes it very easy for the reader to go down the left-hand side of the page to find the reference. Um, the other thing that makes it really easy is the fact that your references are in alphabetical order. Okay? So when you put all three of these pages together, Again, at minimum, this is what your APA paper is going to look like. So do you have any questions about general formatting or that part of it? Okay, well then let's go ahead and let's go back to our PowerPoint. Okay, um, now, Next, what we're going to talk about are references and in-text citations, just some general information about those, okay? Now, I know that you're likely going to be doing um, reference a reference and in-text citation probably in your uh, discussions also. So when you're using information, whether it be from books or periodicals or journals or websites, there's certain information that you need to look for. Um, for any format, it doesn't matter what the format is, you always want to make sure you're looking for authors, okay? And after your authors, you always want to make sure that you're looking for a publication date, whether it's a year of publication, you know, a full date like May 23rd, 2021, or something like that. Um, again, or just a year. You always want to look for date information. Then after that, you always want to look for the title, whether it's the title of the book, the title of the article, or the title of the web page itself. Okay. From there, depending on the format, you know, you look for different information. So for example, under books, you're looking for an edition statement other than the first edition. Or, and you're looking for publisher information. And if it's an ebook, you're going to include a website address or the address of the ebook as part of your reference. Now, under journals, once you find the author, the date of publication, and the title of the article, then you're looking for the journal information. Okay, so you've got the title, you're looking for the title of the journal itself, as well as the volume, issue, and page number. Um, and then from there, you're either looking for a web address or you're looking for something that's called a DOI. And a DOI is just a digital object identifier. Um, that's what it stands for. You don't have to remember that. But what it is, is it's a permanent... Um, permanent link on the internet for that individual author. So for example, if the journal goes out of business, you know, it would be sad to lose all the scholarly articles in that. 
um, that they have put together throughout the years. So there is an organization who provides these DOIs. So it's a permanent link on the internet for the article itself. So that's the information you would look for when you're looking at journals, okay? Next are websites. So, of course, again, you're always looking for individual authors, but it can be, it can also be an organization or a government agency or something like that. The date of publication, the title of the web page, the name of the website itself, if it's different from the author, and then the source uh, web address, okay, so the web page URL. And don't worry about having to write all kinds of notes for this because I'm going to send you a copy of the PowerPoint afterwards so that you have it. Okay, so there are some things to remember when you're putting together information for your APA paper, for your references and in-text citations. Um, the first thing is, is that you always want to format your references first because as you'll see in a second, your in-text citations come directly from those references. So if you've got references there, you know how to put your in-text citation together, okay? Then the second thing is, is that if you reformat your reference, which you may think to yourself, well, I've got all this information, why would I ever have to reformat it? Well, Part of it's because maybe you missed something the first time you looked at it. Maybe you missed the year of publication or maybe you missed the author. Okay, it happens, trust me, I've seen it. Um, so if you reformat your reference, the author field or the year of publication, then you have to go back and reformat the in-text citation, okay? Because they go hand in hand with each other. And that's what's next. You know, the rule of thumb is, is if you have a reference on your reference page, you're going to have a corresponding in-text citation in the body of your paper. And the flip side of that is if you have an in-text citation in the body of your paper, you're going to have a reference on your reference page, okay? The only, the only exception that I've ever seen um, on this is if you've interviewed somebody or if you've taken the information that you're using in your paper from an email. So if you've, interview, if you've interviewed somebody, you know, you've probably taken handwritten notes or maybe with their permission, you've recorded them on your phone, okay? Well, it's very difficult for your reader to have access to your phone or your personal notes. So in that case, you put, an in-text citation in the body of the paper, but no reference on the reference page. Now, not a lot of, um, you know, discussion posts or papers call for interviews, but keep that in mind when you're doing it. Okay, so let's talk about what these references and in-text citations are, okay? So references, those are the full citations that lead your reader to your source material, okay? They are in alphabetical order by the author, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit. They use that hanging indent. So again, your, e your reader can easily go down the left-hand side of the paper to um, find the reference. And because they're in alphabetical order, it makes it even easier. And there are specific fields to a reference and they tend to go in this order. So first you, you're always uh, listing your authors, okay? Um, and we will talk about, you know, the specific rules for how many authors you should list. Next comes the year of publication and notice how it is in uh, parentheses. Next comes the title field. And from there, again, depending on the format of your reference, you're either gonna have a publisher, if it's a book, or a journal or a website name, um, if it's a journal article, or if it's a website. And then finally, you're gonna have your web address or your DOI. 
So those are the things that are going to make up your reference. And we'll look at it uh, much more in depth in a moment. Um, but again, like I just said, there are some specific rules to putting together the author field of a reference. Because if you've ever read some of the studies, okay, you'll know that there, there can be a lot of authors who author a study or an article or something like that. So when you're formatting your authors in a reference, here's an example right here. Notice how the author's last name always comes first. Okay. And then it's followed just by the initials of the author's first name and middle name. You don't have to, um, you don't have to actually spell out their full first name or their full middle name. You're using just their initials. So one author is really easy. You just put the author's last name, comma, space, followed by the initials. When you have two to 20 authors, you know, that wrote an article um, or wrote a web page, you're going to list every single one of them, okay? And between the second to the last and the last author, you're going to use the and sign, which is showing right here, okay? Can everybody mute their microphones? Because I think there's some background noise that is um, that I can hear here. Okay, so that is two to 20 authors. Okay, now what happens if you have more than 20 authors? And may, you may say to yourself, well, <laughs> I'm never gonna have an article that's got more than 20 authors. Well, don't be so sure because I just helped a student last week who had 32 authors in her, um, in her reference. And that's a lot. So when you're doing your reference, and you have more than 20 authors, you want to list the first 19 authors as is here, and then you're gonna do dot, 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 and then you're going to list your last author, okay? So these dots just tell the reader that there are more than the first 19 authors. It's a lot of authors to have to list. But, you know, that's what the new rules call for. So you want to make sure you capture all of them. Um, so you're giving credit to them on your reference page. And then, of course, you have organizations. You may have government agencies. You may have groups as authors. Um, like in this case is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And that's perfectly fine. You know, if you can't find an individual author and it makes sense, that the organization or group or whomever, um, you know, wrote the uh, information, you can certainly use that as the author on your reference. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Yes, I actually have yes. a question. Sorry. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. For your in-text citations, do you list all the authors? No, well. oh no, no, no. Could you imagine having to list 19, 20, 32 authors? No, you don't. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute when we start talking about in-text citations. Um, good question, though, because you're right. No, you don't have to list all of them in an in-text citation. Anybody else have any questions about that? No. All righty. So then let's continue on. Let's take a look how of at how some of your um, references would look on your reference page okay we'll do some examples here so ex for example for books okay again you're always going to list your authors first your year of publication in parentheses now the title of the work notice how the title of the book itself would be italicized okay and only the first word of the um, title and the subtitle are capitalized. Now, if you have like uh, proper nouns or if you have um, abbreviations or uh, 
acronyms, you would capitalize them too. But for whatever reason, APA says you should only capitalize the first letter of the first word of the title and the subtitle. And usually subtitles that come after colons or dashes, okay? Then after that, you have your edition statement in parentheses, followed by the publisher. And again, if you got the um, ebook off the internet, you would add that uh, web address for it. And one of the common mistakes that I see students make a lot is that they capitalize every single word, every single important word in the title. So you want to be careful of that. So here's an example. Okay, here's an example for our reference where you've got two authors. We've listed their last names. We've listed the first name, middle, I'm sorry, first, in, first name initial, middle name initials. Okay, we've got the year of publication in parentheses, the title of the book itself, where only the P in practical and the P in planning are, italic, are, are capitalized, although the entire title is italicized. The 11th edition, since it's other than the first edition, and the publisher, which in this case is Pearson Education. So your journals, okay, they take they they take pretty much the same format, but you're gonna have a little extra information because you're gonna have all of that journal information. So if you notice again, your authors come first your date of publication in parentheses, the title of the article. Now notice that the title of the article itself, that is not italicized. It's the title of the journal or online periodical, whichever one. The name of the journal is actually italicized, okay? But in the title of the article, again, you're only uh, capitalizing the first letter of the first word of the title, the subtitle, any proper nouns, abbreviations, or any acronyms, okay? So that's the title of the article. Then the title of the journal, as I said, is italicized. The volume number is italicized. The issue number, if it's available, because sometimes the issue numbers are not available, you put in parentheses, followed by the page numbers. And then after that, you um, have your web page link or your DOI. Now notice that the web page uh, link or the DOI, that's always hyperlinked because it makes it easier for your reader to go directly to your source information. All they have to do is click that link. So let's look at an example of that. Okay, so in this case, there's one, two, three, four, five authors. So we're going to list them all because we have less than 20. The year of publication is 2015, and that's in parentheses. The title of the article. Okay, the effectiveness of student run organizations within global health promotion initiatives. Uh, notice that the only thing that's capitalized is the T. And then the name of the journal, Global Health Promotion, that's italicized as well as all the important words are capitalized because it's the title of the journal. Okay, then the volume number is 22 and it's italicized. The issue number is three in parentheses, and then you've got your page numbers. Now notice that are, there are periods after each one of these fields, after the author field, after the year of publication, after the title of the article, after the journal information. The one place that you do not put a period is after the hyperlink for the web address. Problem with that is, and I'm really bad at that, um, is that a lot of times it gets caught up in the hyperlink, which means that your reader won't go any place that's useful for them, okay? Because uh, the, the, what leads you to the um, source information is just this information right here, this link right here. If you add a period at the end and it comes, becomes part of the hyperlink, that period, um, 
you know, changes the hyperlink up. So be real careful about that. Okay. Um, and then there are web pages. Okay, because when you're searching the internet, you're going to find some information um, from web pages that you're likely going to be using in your discussions, um, in your papers, if you start writing papers. So again, you're always looking for individual authors first. And if you can't find an individual author, if it's appropriate, you could use an organization name, an agency, a government agency, or a group. Uh, next is the date of publication in parentheses. Then you've got the title of the web page itself. Okay, and notice this time the title of the web page is italicized, and it's that same rule for um, books as it is for web pages that you only capitalize the first uh, letter of the first word of the title, the subtitle acronyms, personal um, pronouns, and abbreviations. Then what you list next is the website name, if it's different than what your individual authors are. And we'll take a look at that. And then you're going to include the web address for the page that you got your information from. Um, I just read a paper last week for a student and the student had only included the website address. You have to include the actual link to the web page um, for where you got your information from. Because if you only include the website address, that'll take the that'll take your reader to the website address. But then they're going to be, you know, having to search around the website itself, all the web pages, to find your information. So he, here is a couple of examples. Okay, in this case, this first example here, I was able to find um, an individual author, a person who wrote the information on the web page. I was able to find the date, okay? And notice if there is a full date, okay? Always the year always comes first, followed by the month and the uh, specific day, okay? So it's year, month, day, that's the format if you have this information here, okay? So next comes the title of the web page how to wash your hands properly according to doctors. Believe it or not, there's a right way to wash your hands. Notice again, the web page title, only the H is capitalized, only the B is capitalized because it's the subtitle. And the whole title itself is italicized. Now, because I have an individual author here, I need to put the name of the website itself. And in this case, it's NBC News. Okay, and then this is the full web address for where you can find, your reader can find this web page information. I didn't leave it at just NBCnews.com, put the whole address here. Now, if there's not an individual author, okay, maybe it is an organization or a government agency. Notice how in this case, it's an agency, the World Health Organization. That's perfectly fine to use as the author. The year 2019, hepatitis A is the name of the web page, but I'm not going to re-put the website name because I've already used it as the author, okay? And then again, just the address, the web address that will take your reader directly to this hepatitis A page. Okay, any, any questions about that before we look at a couple different examples? Okay, because websites tend to be the hardest to take a look at, let's, oh, it does not like that. Yes, it does, okay. <laughs> so when you're looking for website information, okay, you want to usually look at the top of the page, you know, for your individual authors or your publication information or at the bottom of the page, okay? So if we're looking for an individual, 
a person who authored this page and the year of publication or the date of publication, do you see anything here at the top? Anybody? You can unmute yourself. Okay, there is nothing here at the top. So really you can't, there's no individual author, no data publication. Let's go down to the bottom. Uh, let's see here. Okay, here's the bottom of the web or web page itself. What about here? Do you see any individual author, any publication information? Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Anybody? I don't see any authors. Right, there's no individual author here. Now there is a date, the page last reviewed, May 21st, 2021, okay? So you could use that as your date um, because in the end, when they reviewed it, they may have updated information which republishes it. So um, that's the most current up-to-date information. Now, what you want to be very careful of, a lot of times you will find copyright dates right at the bottom of um, a website. Don't use the copyright dates as the uh, date of publication. And that's because that's the copyright date of the entire website. That doesn't mean that the information on particular pages were actually published on that date. So don't use the copyright date. So when we scroll to the top here, let me get back up to the top. What can, what can we use as our author? What do you see here that's usable as the author? Any organization, any agency? Can, uh, Miss, Miss De Leon. Uh huh. Can't we use Centers for Disease? Yes. Control uh, and Prevention? Yep, that's exactly right. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Perfect. That's exactly what you can use here. Um, title <laughs> of the, um, I think I put basics about FASDS is the title of the web page, or I might have put, I got a look, I can't remember, fetal alcohol, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, FASDS, okay? So we've got our title of the web page. This then would be the web address up here because it brings you to the specific web page, okay? So let's go ahead and let's, yep, it was fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. I used uh, this right here as the title. That's what I thought. So this would be how your reference for a web page would look like. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention period, end of the author field, 2021 comma May 21st in parentheses period, that's the end of the publication field. Title of the web page, right here, Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders, FASDS. Now this is capitalized because it's an acronym, period. I'm not repeating the website name because it's the name that's the same as the author. And then I've got my website address, which was this up here. It goes last. And again, you hyperlink it. Okay. Any questions about references? All right. Then let's go on and let's talk about in text citations. Okay, so those references lead your reader to the source material, but an in-text citation is found in the body of your paper, okay? They are just short citations that lead your reader to the full reference on the reference page. Uh, and they're only made up of the author or authors and year of publication, just the year of publication, not the month and the day, just the year of publication. They include a page number or a paragraph number if you're using, you know, like a direct quote. So how do you build your in-text citations for when you're writing your paper? 
Well, the information comes from the reference. It comes from the author field of the reference, as well as the year of publication field. Okay. And th there are three things that an in text citation performs. There's three functions that it performs. Okay. The first one, um, and if we would have talked about plagiarism today, you would have you would have heard you know all about plagiarism and how you need to give credit to your sources. Okay, so the first thing that an in-text citation does is it gives credit to your source within the paper itself, as well as on the reference paper, but specifically within your writing. It gives credit to your source. Okay. It lets your reader know which are the ideas that come from your source information versus what, your, what are your own personal thoughts and ideas and things that you've learned. And then the third thing it does is it leads your reader to the full reference page. So if you look at this diagram right here on the right, your in-text citation is written in the body of your paper, you know, when you're writing your paper out. And in this case, this is a quote that came directly from the website. So notice at the end here is my in-text citation, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention 2020. And in this case, I'm including a paragraph number because my whenever you quote word for word, you have to include a page number if it's a journal article or if it's a book or if it came off of a web page you have to include a paragraph number okay so that's my in-text citation but what it does is it leads me to the reference page okay so on my reference page again my my references are indented a half inch they're in alphabetical order so it makes it really easy for me to match Centers for Disease Control and Prevention with the author in the reference page, 2020 with the date or the year of publication. Um, so it tells me this is the reference that um, I got this information from. This is the link that leads me directly to the reference. So if I would click this link, I would go to the source material. And in the second paragraph, I could find this quote off of this source right here. Now you may think to yourself, why do we need to go to, um, why would anybody want to go to your source material? And there's a bunch of different reasons why someone would want to go to your source material, okay? Um, they may like and uh, want to read more about what the author has written, okay? They may want to check your quote you know, is it correct? Maybe you've put um, a statistic in and the statistic doesn't sound right to your reader and they want to check the statistic. They can go then to the source material and find that statistic and determine whether it's right or maybe you've transposed numbers or something like that. So there's a lot of reasons that they want to get to your source material. But keep that in mind um, is that these three things interlink with each other. The in-text citation leads to the reference, which in turn leads to the source information. Okay, so then you gotta ask yourself, when I've got my in-text citations, where do they go? Okay, there's a couple different ways you can do it. The one thing you don't wanna do is just put them at the end of a paragraph. By doing that, you know, your reader may assume that the entire paragraph came from your source material, where maybe it's only a sentence or two. So there's two ways you can normally do it. First one is to put your in-text citation um, at the beginning of your source material, okay? The, and in this case, this is a paraphrase. And I've got my author or authors and my year of publication as my in-text citation. This is what is called a signal phrase. So a signal phrase leads into your paraphrase or your quote. So in this case, Sand and Ogner 
2020 argued that the washing of hands in a hospital setting is not complicated. However, many health care providers don't wash their hands enough. Okay. The other way to do it is to do it at the end of the source information. Same paraphrase right here, but I'm putting the in-text citation in parentheses at the end. Okay, notice how if you're putting it as part of your sentence at the beginning, you spell the word and out. But if it's in parentheses at the end, you use the and sign. Okay, so in both cases, you've listed your author or authors right here and here and the year of publication. Okay, now that author field that we just took a look at um, and was asked about earlier, they have a couple of rules for um, how many authors you use. So let's take a look at that. Um, in this case, if you if your reference only has one author, perfectly fine. You're just notice how you're only listing the author's last name. You're not listing their first name or um, middle name initials. Okay. If you've got two authors, you're listing both authors. Okay. And again, depends on if you're using it at the end or the beginning of the of the paraphrase or um, quote or whatever. It's when you have three or more authors, that's where it could, um, that's where you have a different sort of rule. Because remember in our references, you have to list up to 20 authors. Well, luckily in your in-text citations, you do not have to list, you know, up to 20 authors. That would, you know, if you think about it, that would be so disruptive when somebody was trying to read a paper um to see where one sentence stopped and then another sentence began and the whole bit so if you've got three or more authors okay this, if this was my reference you know my author field of my reference and my year of publication i've got three authors here what you're going to do is list the first author which is jackson you're going to use the words at all in your in-text citation and then the year of publication, okay? So in this case, this would come at the end of your paraphrase or quote. And since I've got three authors, I've listed Jackson et al. 2012. Or if you put it at the beginning, in their research, Jackson et al. 2012 uh, compared blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you don't have to list all those authors. And then, of course, if it's an organization, you can list the organization as the author. Any questions about that? Okay. Then let's look at a couple of examples here. Okay. This is a reference. Okay. It's the full reference that you would find on your reference page. When you're looking at your references and you need to put an in-text citation because you've taken information from your source, who do we have as the author here? And what's the date that we're going to use for our in-text citation? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. US Food and Drug Administration. All right. And 2020. Yep, that's exactly right. Because what you always ask yourself, what's in the author field, in this case, U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and what's the year of publication? So these would be the corresponding in-text citations in the body of your paper. In this case, as a signal phrase, um, a quote has been used. Okay, so the U.S. Food and Drug Administration 2020 stated that, quote, this is coming directly from your source. The emergency youth authorization uh, EUA is a mechanism to facilitate the availability, blah, 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 end quote. And then you've got your paragraph number, which is telling your reader that this quote is found in the third paragraph of this website right here. Or the other way you can do it is put your quote first, as is done here, and then in parentheses, 
U.S. Food and Drug Administration, comma 2020, comma paragraph PARA period three, end quote. Okay. Um, in this case, we have um, another reference here. What are we going to use for our in-text citation? What's in our author field? Anybody? Well, your author field is so coming. Would be, Go ahead. Um, wouldn't it be IRP Bigadelli? Well, IR is correct. The P is the first initial of this person's last name. So it'd be IR and Big Deli. Okay. Yeah. So you've got it. You just added the extra P. It's a really, it's, it's a very short name, <laughs> as you could tell. Um, but yeah, that's what your in-text citations would look like. Ern Big Del. Uh, oh, I forgot the I there. 2019. I'm sorry, 2009, blah, 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 blah. Indicated blah, blah, blah. Or at the end of your um, paraphrase. That's how it would look. Okay. Yep. Okay, what about this one? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six authors here. We've got a year of publication. What are we going to use for this one? So on this one, wouldn't you just use the last names? You would just use the last name of just the first author. Correct. Right. And okay. then that at all. Right. So yeah, because this at all is standing for, for the rest all of all of these other authors. Exactly. So McLaughlin at all 2019. It's a quote again. So there's a page number. Um, or you know, you could do it at the end of the quote, whichever works for you. Because in the end, you could do it either way. It doesn't matter. You could pick away and stick with it if you want. Doesn't matter. So, Mister. Um, yes. I know mm -hmm. this. No, I'm not. I'm not computer savvy. Okay. So, no problem. <laughs> this is Christina Austin. <laughs> oh, hi, Miss Christina. How are you? I'm fine. Good. So, my question to you is: mm -hmm. Can't we copy and paste, or no, we can't do that? You mean for a quote? For a quote, you can for a quote, but again, if you're copying and pasting word for word, you have to put your quote marks around it. Okay. Okay. So how would you, how would you do that? Um, you would just open a word document. You would copy and paste. You would paste it into the word document and go back and put your quotes around it. Okay. Is that what you mean? Right. Yeah. But now go ahead. You would have to show me that. Because I'm not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's fine. Come into our library Zoom room and I, I can always show you that. Yes, um, but, you know, one of the things that, that for everybody to know is you don't want to use a lot of quotes in your paper. Okay. You want to do more paraphrasing, which is putting things into your own words. If you use a lot of quotes, that tends to, you know, lead your instructor to think you may not be understanding, you know, what's being written. So really, you only ever want to use one or two quotes when okay. you are actually, you know, taking information from your paper. Okay. Gotcha. Um, now, if there's, if the quote is over 40 words, there's a whole different way to do it in terms of indenting everything. But again, Christina, I can always show you that. Any, any other questions about in-text citations? Okay, so how do you know how to do all of this? What are your resources that are available? Again, I'm going to send you a copy of this PowerPoint, um, but you also have myself. You know, you can always email me at L de Leon at stratford.edu, or you can use the library address, either one of them. Um, we're happy to help you with your uh, APA formatting. Um, you can certainly drop into, oh, I forgot to change that, into the library Zoom room. Um, we're open Mondays through 
through Thursdays from 10 to 12, 1 to 3, 5 to 7, actually. And then right now it's Fridays from 10 to 12 and 1 to 3. Um, I'll show you where that link is in Moodle, but we can share screens, you know, things like that and can help you. The other thing that you have available to you is our APA resource guide, which let me show you how to get to that. Um, let me get back here. Okay, so if you're in Moodle, notice how the library has a um, permanent place on the Moodle menu bar. And the very first link here are our APA resources. Now, there are a bunch of different tabs here that have information about APA. So of course, there's a general formatting tab that retell you, you know, the margins are one inch, the spacing is double spaced, your font is Times New Roman 12 point, um, your headers, the only thing you need is a page number. And then the, it, this page also lists what should be on your title page. So you've got all that information. Your home page. Well, actually, let me show you. Remember when we looked at the rules for authors, we were actually looking under the reference tab at authors and under the in-text citation tab under authors. But if you need more examples, say how to put a journal article together, you can go under references and click on journal examples. And it shows you the fields themselves. It shows you the basic formatting. And then it gives you, you know, a couple of examples here. So you've got examples of all of it, um, of web pages, of books. If you have a video, if you have an image, if you have a PowerPoint, okay? Same thing with in-text citations. There's more information about quoting and paraphrasing, but how to format the authors or uh, indirect sources, things like that. Now your home page, which is what you'll always come to when you click that link, down below here, this is where I showed you, you know, the formatting and things like that. But on the left hand side, you also have an APA seventh edition style guide, which is just a short two page guide that on the first page is going to show just the general formatting, you know, things like that. And then the second page on the left hand side, it's going to show you information about your references and some examples and information about in text citations and some examples. So this is just a short two pager. Um, I would encourage you to print it out and have it next to you and then you have kind of everything in a nutshell right next to you. The other thing that you might find really useful is this tab that says example APA 7th edition paper. So if you click on it in the middle box right here, notice this is an example APA formatted paper right here. It's just a Word document. And when you click on it to open it, uh, let me get this out of the way real quick and you enable editing, if I can enable editing, there we go. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Notice how you already have a pre-formatted paper that you can use as a template. It's already got the page numbers. You just have to type your title information here, your name here, the rest of the information down here, and then when you go to your next page, now we didn't really talk about abstracts because a lot of times you don't use abstracts. Um, abstracts are just summaries of your paper. If you don't need it, all you have to do is select the whole thing and click on your delete button and it gets rid of it. But then you can start typing your paper. You would get rid of all this, but your indents would be there for you for when you type your paper. And then on the last page, you would have the format for your reference page. Okay, you've already got the hanging indents um, there for you. you just have to 
get rid of this information and put your information in. Okay, I am going to stop sharing my screen. And that was pretty much what I had for you all today. Um, again, you're going to get the presentations. Don't worry about that. But what kind of questions do you have just in general? 